Rival Evitol aircraft developers Archer and Joby are racing to establish their plans for air taxi services in the UAE. The US companies are both getting support from local regulators to establish early use cases in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, while they are still working on FAA-type certification for their respective four-passenger vehicles. AIN reporter Charlotte Bailey caught up with Archer's chief commercial officer, Nikhil Goyle, at the recent Dubai Air Show for an update. It's been great to be here at Archer's second appearance at the Dubai Air Show. It's great to have you. And this is quite an important region of the world for Archer. Talk me through the significance of the region to you. Well, look, the UAE has been so key to our international strategy. We were here over two years ago at the, first, at the last Dubai Air Show, and we received a phenomenal welcome from the entire country. Since then, we've brought an aircraft here. We've flown it multiple times across Abu Dhabi, both in the city over the iconic Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque, as well as in more remote areas like Al Ain. And what's been really, really great gratifying has been our partnership with the GCAA, the federal regulator here, with our investors, Mubadala and International Holding Company, as well as our operating partners like Abu Dhabi Aviation. And all of that has, I think, created a lighthouse for the world where everybody, all eyes are looking at the UAE and saying, okay, this is going to be one of the first places in the world where we see the launch of electric air taxis. And after that launch, it's going to really set the framework for how we scale globally. So multiple factors that are combining to make this region a really key area of exactly. importance for you. We mentioned certification there and the GCAA. Talk me through some of the conversations that are happening behind closed doors about certifying a novel type of aircraft by somebody that has never certified their own aircraft before. It's certainly an interesting time. Well, you know, look, the GCA is one of the most tenured and experienced regulatory bodies on the planet. If you look at the UAE, they're home to two of the world's best airlines, Emirates and Etihad. And because of that, the GCA has a wealth of experience running an incredibly safe, while also incredibly massive operation. And they do that because they recruit the world's best talent. There's actually a lot of ex-FAA and EASA folks who work here within the GCAA. And They've run a very progressive, forward-leaning and safe operation. They've taken that same spirit towards eVTOL and over the last decade, they've educated themselves, they've gotten up to speed and they've said, hey, we're gonna do this. We're gonna really be one of the first in the world to launch electric air taxis and they're making it happen. I mean, thinking of the US regulator, the FAA, obviously lots of close conversations between both parties. Yeah. Realistically, do you see type certification being achieved in the US first, or do you think it could be here first, and then work the other way? How do you see this one playing out? Look, it's not a race. Here's the way we think about it. In the United States, we've worked very closely with President Trump and his team, who ratified an executive order earlier this year. That executive order established the integration pilot program. That's going to enable folks like Archer to fly in American cities as soon as June of next year. And what's great is in Los Angeles, we've got the exclusive relationship with the Los Angeles Olympics. We built out infrastructure in New York, in San Francisco. There's so much potential in America to really scale this technology. And the FAA and the DOT are working very, very closely with us to do that. In parallel, You've got all of the goodness that we're working on with the GCAA in being able to launch here as quickly and safely as possible. Both of those are happening in parallel and we've got an aircraft fleet that's large enough to support it and a team that is supporting it from across the world. Now, you mentioned the Olympics there. It is, uh, admittedly, it's an ambitious target, but not an impossible one. No. We've seen Paris a couple of years ago where plans didn't necessarily go as manufacturers may sure. have wished. Yeah. What makes you confident that you can achieve the goal of flying at the Olympics or potentially even carrying passengers during the Olympic yeah. period? Well, listen, we're already flying in multiple places all over the world. And that flight test campaign has really given us the confidence to understand that our flight tests perform spectacularly well on, under a variety of circumstances. Now, that doesn't mean we're done. That means we're gonna continue working with the FAA, the DOT, and all of our partners to continue executing those flight tests, continue manufacturing the fleet, and ultimately scale up to the point where our goal is to be able to do safe passenger operations for the Olympics. Now, this is not gonna be a mass market service by that time. It's gonna be a smaller service that's focused on VIPs, on athletes, on premium attendees, 
to be able to showcase the technology in a limited but very, very useful fashion. Do you think this will be a commercial use case or do you think this could be operated in some other way? The goal is to be commercial and um, to do that in partnership with the Department of Transportation and in partnership with the Olympics. It's certainly an exciting time both at the Games and it hopefully is. in the skies. The recent lease you've taken out on LA's Warsaw Airport, obviously yeah. quite central to your plans for the it Games. Is. Was that done specifically with the Games in mind? Are there other kind of aims and intentions around the acquisition of that yeah. lease? Talk me through that project a little bit. So the acquisition of Hawthorne Airport was incredibly strategic for the company in a variety of ways. You know, Los Angeles is one of the most congested cities on the planet. And our perspective is that if you can learn how to launch an electric air taxi operation in LA, one of the most congested, complex airspaces in the world, you can take those learnings and scale them globally. And so Hawthorne is central to LA. It's immediately adjacent to the LAX airport, SoFi Stadium, where the opening ceremony will be hosted. You can imagine one day being able to use Hawthorne as a hub, a hub where you can directly connect to downtown LA, Orange County, Hollywood, Malibu. That's what we really envision. And on top of that, we plan to work with uh, folks uh, and our partners like United Airlines and others to be able to test and deploy artificial intelligence technologies. You can imagine air traffic control that is heavily controlled by uh, artificial intelligence. You can imagine digital apron technologies um, computer orchestration of flights, and a number of other technologies that we're building in-house. And we'll use Hawthorne as sort of our test kitchen to test and learn from that. Do you think these AI capabilities, as you've mentioned, that you'll be demonstrating and testing at also, could that be a new business area for Archer to move into, apart from the EV toll that we'll see yeah. behind us? And look, it's early days. Right now, we're focused on deploying it for our own use case. But you can imagine, uh, and, and governments all over the world, airlines all over the world who we engage with for our core business are really interested in what we're building in-house. So we'll share more about that soon. It's certainly a new development for a company that, if you don't mind me saying, has got a lot on your plate with a whole brand new vehicle and a brand new certification campaign. Have you built the first type conforming prototype that's going to participate in the upcoming flight tests? So what we're doing now is we're completing our fleet of eight, uh, eight aircraft, of eight midnight aircraft. Uh, the six that are to come are going to have various uh, system level components that are TIA. Yeah. And the goal is then to be able to use those for four credit certification testing with the FAA. Uh, and that's going to be really uh, critical to our certification campaign. Do you have a rough estimate on when those four credit tests are likely to start happening? We haven't established a definitive timeline. You know, we'll be ready when we're ready. But um, over, you know, over the next several months, I think you're gonna to start to see a lot of activity when it comes to flight testing and certification. It's a shame we haven't seen you in the air here. Was there originally a plan to maybe fly to Dubai or could that have been seen as premature? We're focused on certification and we're focused on testing in partnership with Abu Dhabi Aviation and the GCAA. As you can see behind me, we've been flying in Abu Dhabi and that's really the focus, is our path to commercialization. Uh, and we're really excited about the progress that we're making there. Thinking of the environment here, it's quite hot, it's humid, it's unforgiving, there's sand everywhere, it is. not just in my sunglasses. Have there been any specific learnings that you've taken from your flight testing in this region that you've had to maybe adapt and integrate? Well, luckily we've been, I think, prepared for those conditions from the outset. The environment, to your point, is unforgiving. There's sand, there's particulates in the air, it's hot. And so the hot weather testing has been really instrumental for us. You know, when we fly in LA or when we fly in Alpatine, internal components of the aircraft can reach almost 65 degrees Celsius. And it's important that we have the cooling technologies that can handle that. Luckily, our engineers were very satisfied with the performance of midnight in those conditions, and that's given us an increased level of confidence to continue scaling our operations here. I'm glad to hear we've got the cooling of the components. What about the cooling of the passengers? That's we were driving in, our car had no AC. Oh my gosh. It was pretty hot, I wow. tell you. Don't take wow. I said that. From a passenger comfort perspective, is that something you're looking to integrate? It's, al it's already integrated into our aircraft. So we work with Honeywell to have an HVAC unit 
within our, our aircraft, a climate control unit that can cool the cabin to very comfortable temperatures as you fly sort of in and around your city. So and that's all the more important here in the UAE. So when you come to the UK and it is cold and it is raining, if I turn the AC off, will I get extra range out of it? The, the energy consumption of our climate control unit is fairly negligible. And so that's one of the sort of ingenuities of our engineering team that, like that's been able to construct that. And I'm thinking of the region as well, your partnership with Etihad Aviation Training. Yeah. It's not too early, it seems to start thinking about how we not going all. to get pilots in the cockpit and not at all. looking to the entry into service. What does your initial training pathway look like? Would it be an ab initio use case? Would it be taking an existing pilot and adding another aircraft to them? Right. So we've already installed the simulator at Etihad Aviation Training. We're working very closely with our operating partner, Abu Dhabi Aviation, who pilots, who are existing rotorcraft pilots, we're going to take to that facility and train them to become Archer eVTOL pilots. We've already started that selection process, and you can expect over the next year, we'll train up our first cadre of pilots. I mean, I'd love to go and have a go at it, but I don't think- Anytime you'd like. I, I don't think I'd probably the be, be the best candidate given my driving skills, ah. given my driving skills on the road. So a new extended partnership with Anduril that's been launched just days ago, obviously part of the Edge group. Talk me through what that could mean for future direction for the company and the aircraft. We've had a long-standing partnership with Andril where we are building a hybrid electric autonomous aircraft for America and our allies. And that is design work that's been going on for the last year and a half. Now, a year ago, we started working on a second project with them for their Omen aircraft. The Omen is a hybrid electric autonomous air vehicle that's displayed and unveiled here at the show alongside Edge Group. One of their primary blockers for the deployment of this technology was the powertrain and the propulsion system. So what they'll be doing is they'll be using Archer's propulsion system, uh, the same exact one you see here on the Midnight, that's going to enable to, them to give that electric power and the range that they need for their aircraft. So this will be fully electric or this will be hybrid electric? It's going to be hybrid electric. So you can imagine traditional jet fuel combined with our electric powertrain. The best of both worlds, some best might of both say. Worlds. Exactly. Do you think that hybridization can then find its way back into the commercial passenger carrying model? Absolutely. So the hybrid system that we're working on with Andril for the uh, larger defense aircraft, I think can absolutely be def uh, dual use. There's nothing inherently military about it. Uh, the goal is for that technology to be dual use for both civil and uh, military applications. And I suppose one final question that sure. is coming to mind. Uh, the portfolio of Lillian's intellectual property. Yeah. Do you see future potential defense use applications coming in for that, or is that intended to feed your ongoing work with the vehicle here? Well, look, Lilium had a phenomenal team of engineers that developed some really incredible next generation technology, in particular, ducted fans, which were very proprietary and unique, especially at the time. We're still exploring exactly how to apply those technologies, but there's a myriad of use cases. Well, I very much look forward to seeing Absolutely. what comes of the ducted fans and everything else. Thanks so much for your time. See you in two years in the air. If not sooner.